My name is Neil Lee. I'm Programme Director of the BSc in Geography with Economics and a Professor of Economic Geography at the London School of Economics. What I'm going to be talking about today is giving you a short guest lecture. And I'm giving you a guest lecture about something which is hugely important, uh, or till recently has been as, seen as one of the most important, most newsworthy things um, facing the UK. Um, and also something where a number of my colleagues uh, have done incredibly important work in helping us understand it. So what I'm going to be talking about today is Brexit. Remember Brexit? Feels like an awful long time ago, but until recently, Brexit was you know, basically a lot of what we were talking about in academia. Now, the reason Brexit matters um, for students on the Geography with Economics course is that much of the, the causes and the consequences will be felt spatially. And the course, like Geography with Economics, provides a, a ideal, um, an ideal introduction into a course, into something like into understanding something like Brexit. So let's have a first look at what happened. You all know in 2016, the UK voted to leave the European Union. It was quite close. It was a 52-48 vote. Um, and it was very, very spatially uneven. So here's a map of the UK. You can see that Scotland, most places, well, every place um, or every local authority district in Scotland voted to remain part of the European Union. Northern Ireland, a little bit more split, but when it comes to England and Wales, you see big geographical divides there. Like London, you know, the area, particularly sort of the parts of London where, where I live, voted hugely to remain in the European Union, or voted to remain in the European Union by a large margin. Other parts of England really voted to leave. You know, if we look up there, you see the sort of northeast um, Lincolnshire, the sort of uh, the Brexit belt of some parts of East Essex, for example, some parts of the Welsh Valleys, and large parts of Cornwall. Cornwall, of course, being um, a relatively, well, beautiful, but a relatively poor part of the UK. Now, the question I ask myself when I see a map like this is, to what extent was Brexit geographical? Because this is a geographical, um, an, a geographical image, well, sorry, this, this reflects other patterns which we know in the UK's economic geography. Now, to understand this, we can think about the way in which the UK economy has changed over time. So this is um, a brief schema and you will sort of understand all of this. We will teach you all of this with equations if you come into geography with economics. But essentially what we've seen in the UK economy, along with most other advanced economies over the last 30 or 40 years, is the shift from an economy which is based on physical production, where the type of things you want are you know, mass production of, of specialist goods, or sorry, non-specialist goods, but mass production of goods where, you know, essentially what you need to do well in the labor market is to be strong, you need physical skills to be able to sort of build stuff. And we've moved from an economy which is sort of something like that to an economy which is based much more on knowledge and information and the ability to use technology such as computers. And sometimes this is called the shift to a knowledge economy. But the key thing is that these sort of industries on, you know, which were done in factory, big factories, routine production. This type of stuff was really based in, um, you know, it could be based anywhere. The kind of knowledge intensive activity, which we've seen growing, has really has to be produced in cities or, you know, it's best produced near universities, in big cities, places like London. This is one of the reasons why graduate outcomes on a degree like geography with economics are so good is because we teach skilled people uh, we teach people um, skills in an environment in which those skills are quite heavily demanded. So we've seen this big economic shift in the UK. Now this has left us with quite pronounced economic geography, something called the North-South Divide. So this is gross weekly earnings in 2016. And the key thing you can see here is that, you know, the, the darker the pattern, the darker the colour, the on average, um, the higher earnings people are. Now this doesn't mean that there isn't sort of you know, pronounced poverty or low pay in some of the areas where, um, you know, where there are, where it's very purple, where it's very dark. And it absolutely doesn't mean that there aren't some high earners in other places. But what this does show you is that on average, the areas of London, the Southeast, these areas which tended to vote remain tend to be richer. And actually, if we, you know, put this alongside the vote for the leave, for the leave vote, what we can see is that the areas which are um, the darker red areas, the areas which voted um, to leave the European Union, these tend to be areas which have often seen economic decline of some form and where people are not earning 
such high incomes. So there are two main theories about the Brexit vote and alongside the Donald Trump vote in the United States and a series of these sort of populist votes. And the most, well, probably the most famous one comes from Inglehart and Norris, who are two um, American political scientists or political scientists in the United States. And they basically argue that what's been happening is that there have been new values and new identities. Um, these have led to a cultural backlash amongst social conservatives. So what we've seen is a shift you know, as people have been threatened by things like um, gay rights, um, views on climate change, um, women's place in the home, that sort of thing. You know, as these new values have come, have become more and more mainstream, there's been a cultural backlash against some social conservatives who have voted um, in ways which is essentially are anti-system. So they're basically saying we don't want this type of system. You know, we were going to sort of try and break up the system. Donald Trump being one example of that, and of course, Brexit being another. So that's one view. The second view comes from my colleague Andres Rodriguez Pose, who's also a professor in the department. And he has the second view that it is the revenge of the places that don't matter. Now, his theory is essentially that if you look at people who voted for Brexit, it's not the poorest people, it's not the people in the sort of um, who are on the lowest incomes, the poorest people actually sort of you know, the vote was a bit more split. It tends to be middle class people, sort of, you know, people on relatively, you know, not the highest incomes, but, you know, okay incomes, but in places which are declining. And Andres Rodriguez Pose, his argument, which is very persuasive, um, is that actually what's happened is we have, um, to a certain extent, not produced, not produced um, development strategies for some of these towns, some of these towns and cities which have suffered from industrial decline. And the Brexit vote, the election of Donald Trump, the Gilets Jaunes in France, all of these populist, um, I guess you might call them populist events, these have all been caused by a failure to construct development strategies for, place, for, for all places, essentially. Now, I'm not going to tell you what to think, because we like to, uh, uh, in geography with economics, we like to produce intelligent people with their own opinions. That's one of the reasons why our, um, our sort of graduate outcomes are so high. But... These are two main, re two main ways of understanding the Brexit vote. Maybe for some people it was a sort of cultural backlash, for some people it was a revenge of the places that don't matter. Now, you should be asking yourself, what do you think? And if you do have strong opinions about this, come to LSE, do geography with economics, and have your say. <laughs>